Hello everyone, I am Richa Parikh. I am currently a third year hematology oncology fellow at Carmanos Cancer Institute in Detroit, Michigan. Um, I would firstly like to thank Health Tree for giving me an opportunity to present um, a recent study that I conducted with our fantastic team um, that includes my co-first author, Francesca Castro, and, a, and a, another co-author, Andrew Durkach at MSK, and then my senior mentor, Dr. Urbi Shah, who, who we know very well at uh, MSK. So I'm going to be talking about our study title, Pre-Diagnosis Dietary Patterns and Risk of Multiple Myeloma in the NIH AARP Diet and Health Study Cohort. Um, so just to give a little bit of a background, um, the incidence of multiple myeloma is rising globally, as we know, and so focused research efforts to try and reduce uh, the risk factors or intercept the incidence of myeloma is very important. Um, uh, then Dr. Shah's team had recently con uh, conducted a survey in about 421 plasma cell disorders patients um, asking if uh, they had any questions related to their diet after their diagnosis and it turns out about 82% uh, of the patients reported that they did have diet related questions and 52% uh, of them actually uh, reported that their questions were not adequately answered by their oncologist. So uh, among the ones that received guide, dietary guidance from their oncologist, 94% attempted to follow it which uh, shows that there is uh, definitely keen interest in the patient population about uh, no, wanting to know more about diet and risk of myeloma. So we conducted this study in the NIH AARP Diet and Health Study to look at pre-diagnosis dietary patterns and the risk of multiple myeloma. So back in 1995-96, the principal investigators of um, the NIH AARP Diet and Health Study cohort uh, went ahead and uh, mailed a food frequency questionnaire to about 3.5 million participants, and we uh, they received about half a million uh, completed questionnaires back, uh, which formed the Diet and Health Study cohort. So uh, we asked for some variables from this study cohort and uh, calculated dietary scores for four types of dietary patterns. Uh, the first one was HEI or Healthy Eating Index 2015. The next one was Healthy Diet Score and uh, or HDS. And then the third one was AMED, which is the Alternate Mediterranean Diet. And the fourth one was HPDI, which is Healthful Plant-Based Dietary Index. Um, so we calculated these dietary indices and grouped them into quartiles, um, uh, into four quartiles with the quartile four being the highest intake of uh, these various uh, di individual dietary components. And we looked at the myeloma risk for these indices. And um, we, after exclusions, we had about 403,000 participants in uh, this cohort. And these patients were, or participants were followed into, uh, until like December 2011, which is a good follow up time. And then we identified cases of myeloma by linking the data to uh, the CR registry. So we had about 1,401 cases of uh, multiple myeloma, which makes our study really the largest epidemiologic study conducted, uh, evaluating directly the risk of dietary factors and multiple myeloma. So um, our study findings suggest that there is an inverse association which is statistically significant with HPDI or the Helpful Plant-Based Dietary Index and reduced multiple myeloma risk. The findings of our study actually validate what is already known about how uh, plant-based diets are protective towards many different cancer risks and particularly so in myeloma risk. Um, we actually uh, have submitted a revised version of this manuscript and it should be out shortly in Leukemia Journal. And um, also I would like to say that Dr. Shah is going to be presenting prudim results from her pilot intervention uh, study uh, today evening. And uh, the, the results did show that uh, plant-based diet was feasible and it led to improved outcomes in precursor state patients. Uh, so stay tuned in and uh, make sure to follow the results of uh, Dr. Shah's poster. Um, thank you so much. Thank you.